How's it going guys? I'm James from KitGuru, back with another CPU cooler review. What we'll be looking at today is the latest addition to the Shadow Rock series from Be Quiet. This is the new Shadow Rock 3. This is a more traditional style um, vertical tower cooler and it includes several heat pipes, a heat sink, a fin stack and obviously a single fan fitted to the front. Now the Shadow Rock series also includes other, uh, several of the different designs, there's slimline coolers and downdraft coolers. There's also a low profile cooler in the Shadow Rock series, what's for um, your small form factor systems. Like I said, this is more of a traditional style uh, that we're used to. So Be Quiet markets this as a premium air cooler. That's not saying that it's a high end cooler, they've obviously got the Dark Rock Pro 4 for that. This is more of a a cost effective solution to replace your you know your, your stock air coolers that come bundled in with certain CPUs so we we kind of expect this to be used uh, for the majority in systems that have kind of mid-range CPUs such as your Intel Core i5s and your AMD Ryzen 5s those kind of CPUs possibly more likely that this will be used with the CPU running at stock frequency or maybe with a mild overclock. More high-end CPUs that are, that are highly overclocked, you'll probably be wanting to use some kind of all-in-one or some high-end air cooler or maybe even some uh, custom cooling for those kind of scenarios. This will be for your more mainstream, low-end, medium-end gaming systems and your general workstations and home use PCs. Saying that though, uh, Be Quiet has rated it at 190 watts TDP so it should be more than capable for cooling you know some pretty decent CPUs. So the main changes with this compared to the previous version the Shadow Rock 2 uh, Be Quiet has actually reduced the number of heatsink fins on this. This one has 30 heatsink fins the Shadow Rock 2 had 51 so that's quite a big reduction in surface area not sure whether that'll affect thermal performance at all, but what Be Quiet has done is they've equipped the Shadow Rock 3 with an extra heat pipe. So on this one you have five 6mm direct touch heat pipes, Shadow Rock 2 only had four, and those heat pipes, like I said, they're direct touch, so they make contact directly with the heat spreader on the CPU, and they are mounted inside or on top of the heat pipes is a solid aluminium heat sink, very small one. So you can currently pick this up from overclockers in the UK for just under £50. So that is that, that does mean that this is a cost effective solution to your stock air coolers. Uh, generally your high end air coolers are more around about the 80, 70 or £80 mark. So to help with the cooling performance, Be Quiet has bundled in one of their Silent Wings 2 fans. Now these fans are known for being really quiet when they're operating. They run up to 1800 RPM, but Be Quiet claims that these fans can run at that speed and generate just 24.4 decibels of noise. Now I'm not sure how Be Quiet tests their noise levels in their fans, whether they do it inside a case or how far away the measuring equipment is from the fan when it's running. But we'll obviously, during our performance testing, we'll obviously run some noise level testing on this as well and see what kind of noise levels we get in our open system. So let's get on with the unboxing process. We'll have a look what Be Quiet has included inside. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. So on top there's a, a bit of foam protecting the top of the cooler with a little a little window cut out so you can see the Be Quiet logo. There's one cardboard box, another cardboard box, and obviously the cooler itself. So let's have a look what's in these boxes. First of all we've got We've actually got four uh, fan mounting brackets. 
So Be Quiet obviously thinks that some people may want to run two fans on this, which might not be a bad idea. You can then mount one on the front and one on the back. There's also a bag full of what looks like mounting hardware, some kind of aluminium bracket. There's a very tiny tube of thermal compound. There's one bag marked up Intel with various bits of mounting hardware inside. And another bag with slightly less pieces inside, marked up AMD. There's also a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver with a, a long shank, obviously to reach down to, to mount the CPU cooler. And there is bit of an instruction manual with an installation guide and some kind of warranty information I think inside the other box is the fan this is the Shadow Wings 2 fan like I said earlier this runs up to it actually says 1600 RPM there, but I'm sure these run up to 1800 RPM. We'll see that. We'll see about that later. And these um, these feature a four-pin PWM connection, so you can control the fan speeds related to temperature in the BIOS or with the motherboard software. So that's more or less everything. What's included? There's not much to it. Obviously this is quite a, quite a simple design, so it should have quite a straightforward installation process. And that's what we'll move on to next. Uh, since it is such a, a quite a simple installation process, what we'll actually do is I'll show you how to install it on both an Intel system and on an AMD system. Uh, I suspect that the AMD part of the installation will be really quick. So let's move on and see how it's installed. So that you guys can get a better view of how you installed the Shadow Rock 3, uh, we've moved the camera in a little bit closer, so you should be able to see all the process as we do it. To install on an Intel platform such as our Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master, it doesn't take much effort and all you actually need is the included Be Quiet Phillips screwdriver. So first of all, we'll prepare the motherboard. We'll flip it upside down so we've got access to the CPU socket. All you need to do is take the Intel backplate and the, the four fixings which hold it in place on the CPU socket. And what you do is you push the fixings through the holes nearest the center they're like a square a square hole so you put there put those in place and then take one of the rubber o-ring washers tiny o-rings and then just slip that over the top of the fixing you might need some nails for this job until it holds itself in position Obviously then do that for the, the remaining three. There you go, now that all the fixings are held in position with the O-rings, you just flip the, the bracket upside down and then the four holes on the motherboard, you just line those up with the fixings and just drop it in place, just like that. Now flip the motherboard back the correct way up and now you can see the, the four mounting fixings poking through the motherboard. Next you just need to take these, these four long standoffs and simply just screw those in by hand on top of the fixings. Sometimes these heat sinks are a little bit awkward and get in the way but you should still be able to get enough pressure on these by hand to hold the, uh, the back plate in position. There's so obviously four of those to screw on. And like I say, 
tightening them up by hand should be more than enough. You can actually just get your Phillips screwdriver in there and just tighten them up a little bit more if you if you feel that's necessary. So the next step is to take the Intel upper brackets and they obviously sit on top of the the standoffs. Just like so. And then there is four Phillips head screws will actually retain the upper brackets in position. Again, you'll just need the Phillips head screwdriver to do this and just tighten those up so they're a nice snug fit you don't need to put too much pressure on just as long as you feel the resistance and feel that it's tight that should be good enough so that is about all the motherboard preparation that we need so for the next part we need to take the take the cooler and remove the warning label from the bottom you don't want to leave that on and before we mount the, the cooler in position, we need to just put some thermal compound on the CPU. I'm going to use the P-size blob method. I always find that works well. So just do that in the middle of the CPU. So before we, before we, actually, mount the, before we actually mount the CPU cooler in position, we just need to take this aluminium bracket that just goes on top of the a smaller heat sink at the bottom of the CPU cooler. And now we just drop the whole unit onto the CPU and just hold it in place while we put the two mounting screws in. So there's one at the front, which goes there. And there's also one at the back, which is a little bit more tricky to get to, but Be Quiet has actually put a little hole in the top of the CPU cooler so that you can get to that. It's still not easy though. I like to just try and drop it in position first. So going down from the hole in the top of the cooler, you can then get to the screw, tighten that into position. So the better way to do it as well is tighten each screw just a bit at a time. That gives a more even spread of pressure onto the CPU as you tighten it in place. That's the heatsink installed. Now we just need to install the fan. We're going to install that on the front of the, the CPU cooler. So to install the fan, we need to take these two spring retaining clips. And one goes on either side. It just hooks into the, the rubber mountings. And then we bring the cooler back into view. Kind of, oops, just pull on the clips until they hook onto the, until they hook onto the little, the little hooks on the, on the actual heatsink. And then, same again for the other side, just pull them until they hook in place. So for the, the final part of the installation, we just need to hook up the 4-pin PWM cable and we connect that directly to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. On our Gigabyte Z390 motherboard, it's actually a grey header, but they can be all black or they can be different colours. You just It's usually actually marked on the motherboard, CPU fan. So that's it. Very simple installation takes probably five minutes and all you need is the 
screwdriver. So now we'll have a look at how we install the Shadow Rock 3 on an AMD platform. It's actually an even more simple process than it was on the Intel system. To show you how we install it on an AMD system, we've chosen an ASUS ROG Crosshair motherboard, and that's based on the AMD X470 platform. Again, all you will need for the installation is the screwdriver that BeQuiet have provided. And for the first step, we just need to remove the two AMD stock brackets, but we actually keep the, the AMD stock backplate that's actually retained for the installation. So just undo the, the four screws and remove the, once you've got the four screws undone, just remove the brackets out of the way. Now you can see the, uh, the AMD bracket is just poking through there. We just add these four plastic spacers. They go one way around over the top of the, the standoffs from the AMD stock back plate. And now take the upper mounting brackets for AMD platforms and they obviously sit on top of the spacers and they're held in position with four Phillips screws. Just tighten those down. And that's actually all the preparation that's needed for the AMD motherboard. So now Again, we remove the protective label from the underside of the CPU cooler. And again, take the aluminium bracket that goes over the top of the, the small heatsink. Pop that in position. Once you've got the bracket in position on the heatsink, just add some thermal compound again using our pea sized blob method. And then drop the drop the heat sink in position over the CPU and then evenly tighten the two retaining screws so that you get equal pressure, tighten them up a bit at a time again. Until it's fully tightened up and it feels nice and secure on the brackets. So there you go, that's the heatsink installed. And now the same, we use the same system to install the fans using the spring retaining clips. Just slip those in position on the rubber grommets on the fan. Same for the other side. Push it into the rubber grommets and then just clip it in position on the heatsink. And then the final stage again is to take the 4-pin PWM fan cable and then just connect that up to the CPU fan header. That's it. It's as simple as that. So now that we've got the Shadow Rock 3 installed back into our Intel test system, we're going to see how it handles thermal performance and noise levels. So at KitGuru we like to try and find the raw thermal performance of CPU coolers. So to do that we, we run them in their, their default configuration with the stock fan installed running at 100%. We then have three uh, different profiles in the motherboard BIOS with three different CPU frequencies and vCore voltages. So for the first test, we'll set the CPU at 3.6 gigahertz across all cores with a 1.15 volts vCore. For the second test, we then set the CPU to 4.7 gigahertz across all cores with 1.2 volts vCore. And then for our final overclocked test, we set the CPU at 4.9 GHz again across all cores with 1.3 volts vCore. 4.9 GHz might not be the absolute maximum overclock you can get out of an Intel Core i9-9900K, but this was the maximum we were able to achieve with this CPU 
on this platform and keeping it stable. So our test system consists of a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master motherboard, an Intel Core i9 9900K 8 core 16 thread CPU, there's uh, 16 gigabytes of Patriot Viper RGB DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz. We have Windows 10 installed on a Corsair LE120 SATA SSD drive. And the whole system is powered by a Seasonic Prime PX850 power supply. So with the CPU set at these three different frequencies and voltages, we then run a series of tests using IDA64 and we put the CPU under 100% load for 15 minutes and we record the average temperatures and then take the ambient room temperature and deduct that from the average CPU temperatures to get a delta. We also run the CPU for 15 minutes at idle in Windows and record the average idle temperatures and again we deduct the room temperature from that to get the delta temperature. That way, any changes in the room temperature doesn't affect the actual readings of the CPU temperature. So with the Intel Core i9-9900K CPU set at 3.6 GHz, we actually recorded an average temperature of 34.4 degrees under 100% load. Now that did put the Shadow Rock 3 quite low down in our charts, but what we have to remember is the Shadow Rock 3 is designed to run at low noise levels. However, the temperature that it did record under load was perfectly adequate for cooling a stock CPU, even one that is as powerful as the Core i9-9900K. With the CPU in our test bench set at 4.7 GHz, the Shadow Rock 3 recorded 56.1 degrees under load. Again, this is quite low down in our charts, but we didn't see any thermal throttling or down clocking of the CPU due to this. And it is still well within the target temperatures for a, a CPU of this type. And finally, at 4.9 GHz, the Shadow Rock 3 recorded 72 degrees average temperature under load. Now this is a little on the high side, but again, we must remember this is a mid-range air cooler trying to cool down a high-end CPU that's overclocked. So overall, performance is about where it should be. So earlier on in the review, we touched on what the noise levels would be like with the Shadow Rock 3, and we expected them to be really quite low. As you can see from our testing, the Shadow Rock 3 recorded 40.1 decibels noise levels with the fan run at 100%. That was only beaten by its bigger brother, the Dark Rock Pro 4. We have to stress that this CPU is designed more for low noise operation than for thermal performance. So that's obviously why it does such a good job with the noise levels. So what are our overall thoughts of the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3? Well, it might not be the best ever CPU cooler in terms of thermal performance, but Be Quiet has designed this more around low noise levels and offering a, a cost-effective solution to using a stock CPU cooler. And I think they've managed to achieve that. Whilst we were running this in our tests with the CPU set at a relatively low frequency, it did a perfectly good job of keeping the CPU temperature under control. Obviously when we cranked the CPU frequency up, it did start to struggle a little bit, but like we've said earlier, we expect this CPU cooler to be used on more of the mid-range CPUs that are not overclocked and running at stock frequencies. In terms of noise levels, this is probably one of the quietest CPU coolers that you can get. Uh, Be Quiet do an absolutely brilliant job of keeping the noise levels down, but still managing to keep thermal performance within range of what you should expect. Not only that, it's quite a good looking cooler. There's a nice bit of design with the brushed aluminium and the top cover that hides away the top of the heat pipes, what can sometimes be a little bit unsightly. Obviously you'll notice that there's no RGB lighting on this. This is again a tradition of Be Quiet, so I don't think 
I don't think they have any RGB uh, CPU coolers available. So it's got a nice understated appearance that should fit in with more or less any kind of system build. So as an overall package, when you take into consideration its price, thermal performance and noise levels, it's a good option. Definitely worth thinking about buying if you're in the market for an upgrade uh, to your current CPU cooler or if you're just looking for a CPU cooler for a new system. Like we said earlier, there's no reason why you can't use this on a, a mid-tier gaming system or workstation or just any kind of general use home computer. As well as that, it's a nice simple installation process and it's compatible with more or less any mainstream desktop CPU platform that you can think of. We had no troubles whilst we were installing it in either of our Intel or AMD systems and I'm pretty sure that even the most novice uh, PC builder will have no issues coming to install this in their system. If you want to have a more detailed look at the Shadow Rock 3, we have a full written review over on the KitGuru website. You can head over there and check that out. We also have a Facebook page where you can discuss what you think of this CPU cooler and other PC components. So if you've enjoyed watching our video review of the Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3, then why not give us a thumbs up for a like and hit the bell button to subscribe and get notifications of other upcoming video reviews we'll be doing. I've been James from KitGuru, thanks for watching.